Now let us finish the one we have remaining here. Okay, security elements. When we then we'll go back to the mapping. So in the last session we saw how routers, aggregators, multicast, splitter, these things work. How we can route data from one branch to another branch. How we can route data to multiple branches. How we can combine back, combine them back and everything. Now for our today's session we will be seeing some of the security artifacts here. Okay. These security artifacts are used to secure your payload uh, or your actual data. Okay. So there's a concept or uh, main concept called as encryption and decryption. So just give me one second. Okay, encryption and decryption. Encryption basically means to convert your data into non human readable format. Now, to convert this, they simply don't go and jumble our characters. No, there are specific algorithms used. Okay, specific uh, using specific algorithms, our data is encrypted. Okay, now when we have our encrypted data, there needs to be some way for us to get back our original data back, original data again, right? So that process is basically called decryption. To convert encrypted data back to human readable format. Again, this is again using uh, algorithm. Whatever algorithm you is used to encrypt the data, its similar algorithm will be used to decrypt the data. Okay, it's not like I can uh, encrypt by any algorithm and I can decrypt by any other algorithm. Then, in a simple way, earlier what used to happen is we used to use keys, something called as Let's say some of keys. Okay. These keys were used with algorithm encrypt and decrypt the data. To encrypt and decrypt the data. Okay. But then what happened? Let's say uh, I'm encrypting some data. Okay. I'm sending it over the internet. Now to decrypt that data, you would also need that key, right? So for that, I'll have to figure out a way to send out the key as well. But what if that key is also exposed and data is also exposed? Exposed. Then there's no point in uh, encrypting this whole data, right? Okay. This is called a single key. Uh, these are called a single key encryption. Okay. Uh, but after that, what we had is we had uh, submit. Sorry. Symmetric key encryption. Okay. But again, due to the issue that I said, like again, I have to send you the data and the key as well. Uh, and when it's fun, they are into the network, they're not safe. For that, then we have a symmetric key algorithm. In this format, what happens is there are two keys with every person or every system or every sender or every party. There's two keys. One is your public key, is your private key. Okay. Now, data is okay. Now, you must have heard this term, right? Public key and private key. So everyone has that. So public key is something that can be made public. You can tell that to everyone and anyone. Okay. But the private key is something that you don't share with anybody else. Okay. So basically, what happens is the data is encrypted using receiver public key. 
and that data can only be decrypted using receivers private key getting my point simple example um, let's say your gmail account whenever some now this is not an encryption decryption i'm just giving this for a concept okay whenever somebody sends you an email what they use is they use your email id which is publicly available okay but to read that email okay only you can read that email because you have that account's password that's basically your private key nobody i cannot read it with my own private i cannot use your account with my password right i cannot decrypt those messages with my account so in those case this is similar to it so data is always encrypted using the public key and decrypted using the private key the same key there is this clear yes yes Like, is this yes, clear? Yes. Okay. That's basically a public key and private key encryption decryption. Okay. We encrypt data, we decrypt data. Okay. Then there's another thing called as signing. Signing will not convert your data into non-human readable format. It will not do anything. With regards to your data, it will just add. Uh, it's similar to like adding a signature to your data. Okay. Now, what happens is you. This is done to verify the origin of the data. Let's say somebody has sent me an email. Okay, and I want to know who the sender is. And now this is a very very basic example. So I just go down. I can see the sender ID. That's fine. But if I go down, he would have signed that email as well. Thanks. This is our from X Y Z. Similarly, if you have received some document, some data, some payload, and you want to verify who has sent it, is this sender a correct sender? Is he a valid sender? Yes. No. Or there's any change in the data? Yes. No. So usually signing is used. when you don't want to encrypt decrypt the data but you want to verify its uh, source or authenticity then signing is used so in signing it is a little bit opposite to the encryption now wait used to sign the data a public key to verify the signature okay your private key is used to sign the data okay and public key is used to verify that signature that okay belongs to this person is this clear yes Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Business scenarios. Okay. Now, uh, encryption decryption. You might have heard PGP encryption, PGP decryption. Then, you, if working in PI, you must have some. If not yet, in some future, you would receive a requirement like I'm placing files on SFTP. They need to be encrypted. You're fetching files from the SFTP or FTP or somewhere else, and they need to be decrypted. Okay. so that the kind of scenarios where you would be using encryption and decryption apart from that for signing uh, you would receive scenarios such as we are again getting some data and we need to verify its signature that like it belongs to this party or that party the data are usually sensitive and they have a lot of like uh, mostly these could be our private data transactional data bank details things like that sensitive data so in those cases you would have to check your signing going to the system here under this lock icons 
security palette function. We have encryptors and decryptors. We have signer and verifiers. Okay, so let's go with encryptor. Again, we here we have two types of encryptor: PGP and PKCS7 encryptor. So PGP is basically our pretty good privacy where we use public key, private key. Okay. This is the widely used encryption decryption. Okay. So whenever you want to encrypt the data, you go for encryptor. Okay. And under the processing. First parameter is, do you want to include signatures? Do you want to encrypt the data, sign it, and then send? Yes, no. If you select including, you'll have to sign the data. Okay. Then content encryption algorithm. So I told you that there are different, different algorithms uh, using which we can sign the, uh, sorry, encrypt the data, decrypt the data, and sign in and verify. Okay, so they, these are different types of algorithms. So you, by default, you keep it uh, whatever your target condition, target system satisfies or target system can handle, but mostly it could be AES. Then your secret key length. So there are different types of key length. So secret keys are generated, and when they are generated, they have some fixed length. Okay, so these are the secret key length. So the more length you increase, uh, the more data will be secure, more time it will take to process. Okay, so based on your secret key length, you can come here. Compression algorithm, once your data is uh, signed, how do you want to compress it? Then armored is basically, it will create a... My uh, yeah, compression algorithm, um, I mean, what's this? Like default, default, what do we use? It's ZLIP. I have not uh, changed it anyways. Okay. You can use ZIP like the we had here. No, in the, that will come later. Okay. Sending or uh, receiving data at that time also, sometimes these compressions are used. So ZIP is one of the compression methods. ZLIP, I'll have to check. Could be for other system. Okay. Then armor will basically encode your data into base 64 format, and then here, uh, integrity protected data packet is basically it will create a header. I believe I'm not sure about this one, but it will create a header for your data. Can you repeat what are, is armored? I didn't it will, en en it will encode your data into uh, base 68 format. Okay, base. Okay, okay. When that is done, uh, this is one of the other mandatory parameters here, encryption key user ID. Okay. Now, as I said, you need to have a key to encrypt the data. You need to have a key to decrypt the data. Here, encryption user ID keys from public key ring. Now, let me tell you what key ring will be. That's not there. It's not there. It's not there. If you see here, I have two files named as public and secret. PGP public keyring, PGP secret keyring. Okay. These files, uh, okay, for public keyring. Uh, the public keyring file or the pubring file contains all the public keys of the uh, receivers. For example, in Hindi, we say chabiyon ka guccha, a bunch of keys. This is something similar. So here, uh, I'll tell you how to add these files here. But here, uh, what happens is, you always uh, add whatever the keys you have into pubring key. Then, what are the secret key, your own keys you have, you add them to your uh, secret keyring file. 
and when referring here okay let me add it whatever you pay whatever you put in here what are the users you put in here it will go and check from these key rings if they exist then it will use it if they don't exist then it will throw an error like no such thing exists okay so here your pgp keys and everything get deployed so has anybody of you worked with the model adapter been for pgp encryption or decryption in pipo no no so that the model will adapter in that what happens is you give your path you give your key uh, then you give your passphrase and everything okay like all the security parameters you give in that module b and those have those keys have been basically deployed by base system mostly the base system would do the deployment of those keys on the server they place it on their uh, uh, okay are you guys aware that pipo had its own file path its own data storage al11 kind of file path no okay okay let it be so uh, what happens is they store it uh, in the server okay so similarly what we are doing we are storing these here in the server pgp public key ring pgp uh, secret key ring. we are storing these keys here and then we'll be using it here okay let me show you let me check if there is any data Mayank, this run simulation thing isn't working with all the payloads. Is there any specific size or something? No, uh, it won't take more than one MB payload size. Okay, okay. Yeah, and couple of pallet functions, uh, you'll not be able to simulate. We'll not be able to what? Simulate couple of pallet functions like here. Oops. Your data store operations. Oh, uh, there's one more. Your calls to the external system, but you can simulate the responses there. There are aggregators; those you can't simulate. There are a couple of those. Okay. Okay. So now, if you see this, this is the message. this has now became my message so it starts with this begin pgp message and ends with end pgp message let me see this was my data and this is what it has been converted into so that's basically a encryption clear Yes, we'll get to the keys. Don't worry. We'll generate keys as well. Going to decryptor. Okay. Under decryptor, you'll just have to select if there are any signatures or not. Let's see signatures later. Pick after this. For now, my public key and private key both are inside the system. Usually, what will happen is you will have your own private key and you will have public key for other people. Now, if you see the decryptor data was this. Uh, sorry, to decryptor data was this. and after that after decrypting the data okay we get our original data back so decryptor <clears throat> identified the private key using which it can decrypt the data and started decryption here okay. 
and this is how we get our data back. Any doubts? No. Okay. Now, as I told you, we can also sign the data at the same time while encryption or decryption. Now, if you see here, if I do signatures including, I need to enter the user ID from secret keyring. See, now this time it on top for encryption, it's public key, but for signing, it is secret keyring. Which ID you want to sign it with, basically, and then the signature algorithm. Myank, I didn't understand this point. Why are we giving Myank here? Uh, this is the user ID for which that keyring is assigned. I'll tell you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So there's a way you can create your own keys as well. I'll tell you that website. Just you store your keys there. This is the user ID with which my keys uh, are right, like associated for so everything. Like I cannot have here a 156 character thing. So it's a simple user ID that is assigned to that specific key. And these can be your sender receiver names like your SAP system, your cloud system, your third party system, your SFTP, your a company's name, Capita, Capgemini, XYZ. Like some company sending you the data, you are sending some company the data. It can be the case, right? So these can be your names there. It's like it, this Mayank is like an alias for that uh, 157 characters key. Kind of, yes. Okay, and that we define in CPI only? Yes, uh, no, no, no. That we define during the key generation. Okay, we uh, will we be not able to see the Mayang here in the pubring or secreting? No. Oh. So that's another concept. While generating those keys, you have to take care that you note down all the information and keep it stored with you so that you can share it in the future. That is why uh, usually in like PIBO system, your basis team takes care of that thing. So they can provide it to anyone who needs them. Okay, so this alias we'll have to keep it in mind. It won't be visible anywhere. Correct. Okay. Then we have the signature algorithm. Sorry, Mayank. Will you be showing that as well? Uh, how no. To, how to generate how... the key? Ah, yes, yes, yes. That I I'll tell you. How to huh. generate this key? I'll tell you. Yeah. Okay, now my message is signed as well. Okay, and here if I do signatures non expected, let me just run it. This time my encryptor will also sign the data. See, this is the body and error details are the pgp message have been tampered okay reason a pgp message contains signature although signature is not expected yeah i have the configuration not expected if i do as optional or required then it should run fine if you keep it as optional it becomes non mandated For when I go to decryption, it also asks me for the who is the sender. For now, uh, me, it's all the same since I'm using only one. So this is always the key. But here, your uh, key for your sender system would be in total, like SFTP system, company name, third party, anything. We get the data back 
in the format we need. Clear encryption, decryption. Yes. 